Hey, what's up you guys? This is Gabby and what are we gonna get into today? One of my videos that I still get a lot of questions about and you know, people comment under the video still asking me a lot of questions is my video about the no BS guide to macro social work. Um, there's people who ask me, hey, do you think I should major in direct practice social work or macro social work or what type of jobs can I get in macro social work? First, I wanna tell you this, I can't tell you, no one actually can tell you whether you should major in direct practice social work or macro social work. That really is something that you have to figure out by yourself after doing research, such as watching videos like this. So hopefully I can help you with giving you more information, but you have to ultimately be the one who decides for yourself. But as far as macro social workers, what do they even do, right? So a lot of macro social workers work in the advocacy side of things. So they do research on and gain information and understanding on different social issues and they educate people about these issues. They spread awareness as a way to create change that can be legislatively or just, you know, smaller impacts in communities. Another aspect of what a macro social worker may do is community education. So once they get information about different societal issues, they try to educate community members on how they can, you know, prevent the issues from happening to them or how they can go about solving certain issues that they may be facing. So I'll give myself for an example based on what I used to do at a previous job. So I live in Detroit, a huge problem is tax foreclosure and tax foreclosure usually impacts people who are lower income at a higher rate than other residents in the city. So if you can't afford to pay your property taxes, ultimately you can become homeless and lose your home to the foreclosure auction. So my job was to spread awareness and to educate communities on the impacts of tax foreclosure, explain how they can prevent their home from going into tax foreclosure and what type of resources were available to them. And I worked with our public relations team, our marketing team in order to create materials to help to spread that awareness. And I also did some public speaking at different community events to spread that awareness as well. I really look at macro social workers as social detectives. So oftentimes it's their job to try to gain knowledge and data on different social problems, whether that's them doing research themselves or just them culminating data that other people have captured through their research. With that research, they often come up with or help to manage different programs. And I think it's really important for macro social workers to know how to collect and analyze data because when you create programs, you're gonna have to show someone or multiple people that your program is actually being successful. So in order to do that, you'll have to showcase the data and say, hey, this is how implementing this program have changed these individuals who are a part of the program and so on and so forth. Community outreach is another big part of what a macro social worker may do. Um, I'll give another example of that. So as a macro social worker, you're probably not doing the outreach yourself, but you may be creating programs and creating different outreach initiatives where you're managing other people who are doing that outreach. So in the past at you know a prior job, we created an outreach for educating residents about property tax foreclosures. So basically we hired canvassers to spread awareness to residents in the city of Detroit who were at risk of losing their homes to tax foreclosure and provided them with steps they could take to take action and keep their home in their possession. So this was a huge city of Detroit initiative where the goal was to talk to every resident who was at risk of losing their homes. So as you can see, this is something that's more macro level because it's not, you know, doing therapy one on one, but it's trying to solve a societal issue that impacts an entire city. A lot of macro social workers may end up working for the government, working in business or like direct practice social workers in nonprofits as well. Okay, so why did I choose macro instead of micro? This was not an easy decision for me. I actually spent weeks and weeks in my grad school program trying to decide which way I wanted to go because it's, it's a tough 
thing to figure out for yourself. I wanted to impact larger groups and make a difference on a more societal level. I think it's really important to have people at both ends of the spectrum who are working one-on-one -on -one with people and who are doing more of that you know, macro, larger picture work. But I personally wanted to do larger picture work and I felt that that's what I needed to do to feel that I was making the change that I hoped to make. Sometimes I think about the similarities between macro social work and fields like sociology or public health, but doing macro social work still allows you to go out there, get your hands dirty, interact with people, but it's not doing therapy. So that's why I wanted to choose that route. Like I, I didn't want to, you know, be someone who focused solely on research or, you know, data analysis. As I mentioned, that is a part of macro social work, but me, I'm definitely more out there. I'm in communities, I'm talking to people. I'm doing that, you know, typical social work type of actions, but I'm not doing therapy or working directly with people. So that's why I chose macro social work over any other type of field. I also wanted more flexibility. I will say that macro social work is more general, so it's not as specific as direct practice social work is, especially if you focus on something like school social work or therapy, which a lot of direct practice social workers do. Um, so it's not as specific. So it does give you access to more job opportunities, I feel. But the con in that is that once you graduate, you still have work to do around figuring out what you want to do in life and what career path you want to take. Because I think the opportunities are uh, larger with macro social work, but you know, that means you're going to have to put in that work after you get your degree to figure out what you want to do after because your future is not as clear cut as someone who studied direct practice social work and focused on therapy. I also wanted to learn leadership and business and I wanted to prepare myself for possibly being like a director, executive director in a nonprofit. So I felt that um, my path was the way to do that. Like in my track of macro social work at my school, we had the opportunity to take leadership classes and a class in social enterprise, which taught you how to open up your own social entrepreneurship company. And we learned how to make a business plan and all that. And I just thought that that was more aligned with my interests as opposed to learning about therapy and more direct practice work. So who is macro social work not for? It's not for people who are totally invested in doing therapy, people who enjoy working one-on-one -on -one or in intimate groups. Um, I do that every now and then, but most of the time I am working in large groups. I'm at you know huge meetings with a bunch of people at the table trying to come up with different solutions or programs for larger societal issues. If you are afraid to be front and center, macro social work may not be the field for you. I mean, you have the opportunity to grow out of that and to get used to it. But honestly, like I am always in front of a group, you know, it kind of comes with macro social work. And I don't think macro social work is for you if you are interested in learning the behaviors of individuals and small groups, because I really don't think in those terms and I wasn't trained to think in those terms. Even now after you know I've been out of school for years, I still think about the world in terms of systems, societies and cities. That that's just how my mind operates. I want to mention that things are not set in stone. If you are right now trying to decide if you want to do direct practice or macro social work, I would, you know, not worry too much. I mean, definitely put a lot of thought into it, but if you end up wanting to do direct practice later on in your life, you can still make that change and pivot in that direction. And the same, like if you end up choosing direct practice and you want to do something more macro later, it is possible to make that change. And also, I think it's important for all social workers, no matter what focus area you choose to have a basic understanding of both the macro level stuff and the micro level things because you really want to keep your eye on the holistic picture of society so you want to look at individuals and how they are impacted by certain issues you want to look at 
you know, small groups, communities, cities, countries. I think it's important to really take into account the micro and macro level when thinking about societal issues. If you are a therapist, you may realize that you see a lot of children who have been abused by their parents. So maybe you wanna start doing some advocacy work around childhood protection or childhood exposure to violence. That's something that makes sense because you have that direct experience working with people who've been affected by that issue. And I also think that macro social workers need to make it a point to stay in contact with individuals that you are creating different programs for because you don't wanna get out of touch. You wanna make sure that the programs that you are creating are actually impacting people in the way that you intend for them to be impacted. So definitely be creative and look for ways to stay in touch with the communities that you hope to serve. So for example, like I am on a board where I am working with a nonprofit one-on-one -on -one, and through that position, I'm able to stay in touch with uh, youth who live in my city and youth that I hope to create programs for and provide grant dollars for. So being on the board and being able to interact with young students in the city allow me to learn more about their wants and desires, allow me to just remember who I'm hoping to serve and why the work that I'm doing matters so much. It really does just help me to stay grounded in reality. One cool thing I like about macro social work is that it allows you to be a part of a very multidisciplinary team. So you get to learn from people from so many different fields and areas of focus. So for example, throughout my years doing macro social work, I've worked closely with urban planners, lawyers, people in public affairs, marketing, public relations, public health. Actually, I've worked at places where I had the exact same position as someone with an urban planning degree. But the interesting thing is I was able to bring a unique perspective from the field that I came from. Another question or worry that I saw people comment about on my other video about macro social work is they were afraid that it would be harder for them to get a job if they go in the macro social work direction as opposed to the direct social work direction. So this kind of goes back into what I said earlier. So when you study direct social work, your path is more laid out for you. It's more clear for you because you already know most of the time what area you're gonna go in. You're gonna work for a hospital, a school, you're gonna do therapy. Like a lot of times, I'm just thinking from experience, talking to my friends who major in direct practice, they knew what area they wanted to go in. But macro social work, as I mentioned before, there's so many ways and directions you can go in to where when you graduate, you really do have to put more time into figuring out what you wanna do because it's just not as clear of a path. And when you're looking for jobs, you know, you're not looking for jobs that are titled social work or case manager. You have to really look for jobs that are not marketed towards traditional social workers and think outside of the box. So you have to do the work and the research to figure out how the skill set you have earned in your degree program connects with different titles you see when you're scrolling through the job postings that are less obvious. So let me give you some examples of those less obvious titles. Program officer, fund developer, community planner, field organizer, grant writer, prevention specialist, policy analyst, program manager, community health worker, research associate, community relations specialist, volunteer coordinator, as you can see, these titles don't really scream social work, but those type of job positions are great for people who have majored in macro social work because they have those skill sets that those type of individuals with those titles need. As I mentioned before, I often see a lot of people who are afraid about studying macro social work because they don't know if they can get a job. So I wanna give you a few examples of ways that people with a macro social work focus can break into their area of choice and most importantly figure out where they want to go with their degree because it's not always as clear for people with macro social work as it is for people in direct practice so americorps i think is a really good 
track to go in in order to you know figure out exactly what area you want to work in and there's so many different type of americorps positions out there i would just you know scan different americorps jobs and you know find one that sounds interesting to you and if you're not clear on what you want to do after grad school i would take an americorps position for a year and try to figure it out the Peace Corps may also be a good opportunity if you're feeling adventurous and you don't mind taking a few years away from your home country. CD Year is another good example. Now this is focused more on the education side, but I think it's a program that may be of interest to someone with macro social work if they are interested in education but still trying to figure out if they wanna go in that direction for sure. Also, just look at different fellowship programs that may pique your interest as well. So profellow.com is a website that I recommend to any macro social worker still trying to figure out what area they want to go in. I actually found my fellowship program on this site. There's always so many different postings and opportunities on this site. This is not sponsored you guys, but like that is one of the best sites that I found for finding a fellowship program that is a best fit for you. Don't be afraid of just, you know, taking an internship to try to figure it out as well. And I understand that all of these positions that I just mentioned are going to be low pay, but in the long run, it is going to teach you so much. It's going to help you to figure out what you want to do in your career and it's going to impact you positively. So if you're willing to take that year to try to figure it out and to sacrifice pay for a huge learning opportunity and boost in your future career, I think it's totally worth it. I've done a fellowship program before where it was low pay, but it has helped me immensely. I don't think I would be where I am right now without that fellowship program. And I've grown so much in my career in such a short amount of time because of that opportunity. So I really do encourage you all to um, look into it. And it also helps you to connect with new people and to network and meet a lot of people who can help you in your field in the future. So to me, these programs is a win-win for someone who's still trying to figure out their career path and what they want to do in life. All right, you guys. So if you guys have any more questions about macro social work, please leave them below. Please comment on this video, like this video. When you guys do that, it helps other people to find my content and hopefully get help from it as well. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.